Hello and welcome back to VHS Bootleggers, out in the garden, enjoying the sunshine, doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Uh, but I also found the time today, uh, in between doing work, to go and grab a Facebook Marketplace pickup. And uh, it cost £15 all of this, so this one's for the wrestling folk that are into that. This is mainly literature. I do have some other pickups here and uh, an interesting package sent by the one and only Scott Brand, aka Sega Zombie. So let's crack on with this. So as I say, 15 quid for all of this. Um, <laughs> it's obviously a, a big wrestling fan. There's a picture of John Cena there. Mm, nice. <laughs> Not sure what I'm going to do with that. So there's a load of magazines, so we'll flick through these quick. They're from 10 years ago. No, they're not, a bit longer. 2009. They're an Undertaker on the front. Cena on the front there. Edge. Batista. Jeff Hardy. Rey Mysterio. I'll have a flick through these, see what they're all about. Triple H. I have no idea who that is. Undertaker again, and another Triple H. CM Punk. Cena. Another Cena. Another Mysterio. And another Batista. Okay. So I was interested in some of these because I recently, if you want to go and check us out on, it's me actually, none of the other lads, on uh, VHS Bootleggers on Instagram. I'm showing a few books that I'm reading at the moment, and one of them was, um, I think it's called That Is Hardcore, This Is Hardcore, and it's Terry Funk's biography. It's really good. And I've previously also read Stephen Regal's. Uh, okay, annual here. This is kind of kiddie stuff, really. So, eh, that's quite interesting. WrestleMania 25th anniversary, so I will have a flick through that. But again, it's kind of aimed at kids, really. Stats and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is quite interesting. Um, unscripted. World Wrestling Entertainment. And it's a... Uh, I don't really know what it is. Uh, shooting, I suppose. It's the WrestleMania stars talking about the reality of life in the ring. Um, what's real, what's not so real. You wouldn't see Benoit now, so that in itself makes this quite interesting. Yes, so what else have we got? Now this is what piqued my interest the most. Some of these are well and truly out of print and actually becoming a little bit expensive to buy, as I say. I got the Terry Funk biography for about 22 quid and the Regal one was similar kind of money and that's good. I've seen the Terry Funk one go for over 50 because obviously they're long out of print now. This one's interesting. Hulk Hogan, Hollywood Hogan. So Hollywood Hulk Hogan with Michael Jan Friedman. Think you know about Hollywood Hulk Hogan, brother? You don't know squat about me. Or that, the worst ever impressions you might get here today. Uh, I'll definitely have a look at this. So it's from 2003. Gotta love the Hulkster. Well, Tales from the Never Ending Travels of WWE Superstar. You've got the Big Show and Mysterio on the cover there. True or mostly true stories of the road from Cena, Henry, Moore, Hardy, the Hurricane. Um, Trish Strauss, Booker T, Undertaker, all of them. Triple H, Ric Flair, Dean Malenko. Yeah, so probably kind of comic in nature, I'd imagine. This one I was after anyway. Uh, Shawn uh, Michaels, the heartbreak triumph, the Shawn Michaels story. One of these is a Christian kind of novel. So it comes, it comes at uh, Shawn Michaels' life from a Christian perspective and how he found God later on in life and he's a born again Christian. So that intrigues me. I'm not sure whether or not that's this one or not, but it is a WWE 
licensed book. I think this is more of just a biography. But I would be interested in looking at that Christian one. Just out of uh, looking at people's perspectives. This one's I've been after as well. The Hardcore Diaries by Nick Foley. And this is from 2007, so it's his second book. Um, I read the first one many, many moons ago when I was, funnily enough, travelling to America. Uh, brilliant. Signature moves, the finishing moves of sports entertainment superstars by Michael McAveen. Wow, that's cool. So in this we've got all the different finishes and all signature moves. Yeah, that's interesting. You know what, I've actually got a magazine rack that I might convince the missus to let me have in the toilet. Because I'm sick of going in there with my phone. It's just become habit now, but I used to like reading magazines and books, um, occasionally shampoo bottles, but let's get back into the book thing. That's cool, I like that one. Definitely going to go in the toilet. My friend uh, Russ, the retro bear, who's going to be appearing on Tuesday discussing a lot of WWE and WCW pay-per-views that he's managed to acquire over the years. And he's very kindly gifted to me a few weeks ago. I've been really enjoying him. He did mention this book. He said it's definitely one to get. Jerry the King Lawler. Now, of course, wow. Uh, Lawler, he's had a very interesting life. He's no angel by any stretch of the imagination. But I find him compelling. I think he's a brilliant broadcaster. And um, a decent wrestler as well. I find, I think he's sharp. And I do enjoy uh, his witty sort of put downs and things. Uh, he's not the most politically correct, but of course, I like that as well. Jerry the King Lawler. It's good to be king sometimes. There's a no holds barred personal account from the puppies panting king who steps out from behind the announcer's desk at WWE Raw to hold court about everything. Yeah, so he's going into all sorts here. You know, grappling with Ric Flair, uh, Jesse Ventura, Andre the Giant, Terry Funk, and Bret Hitman Hart, all sorts. Um, the King reveals the schemes and outrageous storylines to many of wrestling's most fantastic theatrics and all too real moments. So this is obviously prior to the death of his son. Um, so yeah, maybe this is a bit more of a fun account of early life up until this point, 2003. Yeah, R.I.P. Scotty Too Hot Egg. I'm not interested in this, not a fan of Goldberg at all. That'll be going back on eBay. Just not a fan. Not for me. Um, do like The Rock, though. And I'll be interested to hear about what he's got to say about his early life. The Rock says, um, just a rock biography. Obviously not self-penned. But why not? That, that intrigues me. I'd, I'd like to hear about how his upbringing, because, of course, his dad was a famous wrestler as well. So yes, that's definitely going to be red. Another person I like a lot, uh, sort of maybe the last sort of true, I don't know, Gen X, if you like, uh, wrestler that came through a little bit later on. Or certainly became, came through in like 1990, I think, but has uh, subsequently really earned his stripes. And it's Jericho, uh, Lion's Tale. So I, I really like Jericho because he's a man of uh, many talents. Um, I do recommend having a listen to Talk is Jericho and listen to it all the time. Um, but only recently just started to get into it really, after Dark Side of the Ring. And, you know, we always liked Jericho because, he, you know, he, he went out there and, and sort of did what he wanted. You know, Y2J and everything and stood out um, and kind of fought the establishment in some ways. Very much looking forward to that. Again, someone else I have absolutely no interest in at all. In fact, I actively dislike him for a number of reasons. Dave Batista. Um, I must admit, I haven't seen many of his matches, so I can't really comment on his wrestling side. But to me, all these other guys, with the exception of Goldberg, have got no interest in He's just a big lump, isn't he? Regal showed him how to wrestle. Um, Batista's got similar, you know, arrogant and... I've heard some sort of horror stories, maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but stories about how he was supposed to go and you know, sign autographs in Wolverhampton Civic Hall and just moaned and bitched and didn't look at the kids. I think that's disgusting, 
quite honestly, I'm not getting them a moral high horse, but if kids come and pay to see you, be nice to them, sign the autograph, spend time with them. Uh, not just kids, also adults and stuff who, who are into the wrestlers. You know, have some respect for people. Um, so yeah, I don't like Batista. He's just a, you know, a whinging sod, really. A, a corporate entity. Not a fan. So yeah, I don't want to hear that. Don't want to read it. That'll be going up on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm an opinionated sod, but everything else I'm really pleased with. What a bargain, 15 quid, especially because they're out of print. Now, what should I do next? Oh, there's more. Oh, oh right, okay. I will show one thing out of here. These are CDs from the charity shop, so I've done a bit of work this morning, and uh, I go around on the hunt, getting bits and bobs, and some of it I keep, some of it I pedal on. This one I will show, though. It's brilliant, and I was really pleased to find it. It's three DVDs all about um, Frank Zappa. So if you're a fan of Zappa, like I am, I mean, I haven't listened to everything, but I appreciate him as a musical icon genius. And again, certainly like an iconoclast of his time, if you like. He was, he was out there. He was an original, a true, unique entity. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't have too many of them these days. So I've got, I will, without a doubt, be watching these. Something to look out for because they're worth a few bob. As you can imagine, Frank Zappa being, you know, having a cult following and being such a musical legend and doing, as I say, doing things his own way. So this one's got Baby Snakes, the Dub Room special, the Torture Never Stops. So I'm thinking, I'm presuming it's concerts and maybe a little bit of his other weird stuff that he does, you know composition, backstage footage, that kind of thing. Very much looking forward to that. As I say, on eBay, you're looking at sort of maybe up to £30 for that in this kind of condition. Yeah, You'd be surprised at how DVDs are creeping up. I won't show any of these, but it's basically CDs. If you are interested in my music collection, um, I do I show a whole wealth of different genres and discuss them. Well, I'm going to. Right at the minute, it's just been rave cassettes, really, that I'm collecting. But I've got all sorts of different genres of music that I'm into, and also production. Uh, if you're interested in that at all, the channel for all music is Pedro's Musical Mind Bakery, right here on YouTube. As I say, there's not too much up there at the moment, but I do intend to do uh, more videos covering all sorts of specialists. And, I mean, to be honest, they're kind of quite pop popular type, type of uh, tunes, dare I say pop music or uh, contemporary or mainstream, uh, but I like some of that too, but I'll go into detail as to why I like particular things. All right, so I love me made fucking Stanley here, mate. This here is the result of our VHS bootleggers trade table. Um, I thought it was a great stream personally, there was loads of people watching, I'm, I'm sure we're going to do another one sooner or later. It takes a while to get these things established but of course with Retro Chef and the one and only uh, Sega <laughs> Zombie, um, hopefully Mark next time and of course Big Mike, the OG, we uh, put that out there and there's a lot here for swaps and stuff but I saw that Scott had this bunch of stuff. And I was like, right, I'm really interested in this. And I've forgotten what it was, if I'm honest with you. Let's just take it out. Oh, right, okay. So this is what, Scott did me a wicked deal on this. And this is the first thing. I do remember this one well. So I wanted this to have a read. The Muppet Show book. So this Muppet Show book is, um, I believe it's from the 70s. Yeah, 1979, and it's obviously well and truly out of print. It's, it's just wonderfully done. I like the Muppets a lot. I like puppets. I'm a puppeteer in a previous life. We might even bring them, drag the old puppets back out again for some naughty carryings on. Um, yeah, so it's a really old book. Just like the look of it, I'll have a flick through again, and it's kind of rare. So I gravitate towards things that have scarcity to them and rarity. Now I do remember 
requested these as well. Haven't seen this in many a moon. Single white female on the Cinema Club imprint. Wow, Jennifer's Jason Lee, Bridget Fonda, um, about a female who uh, moves into an apartment with another woman and basically starts taking over her life, becoming her, I believe. It's been a long time since I saw this. 1992 it come out. I probably saw it in 1992. I don't think I ever saw it again. I remember it being one hell of a good psychological thriller. Um, very much looking forward to seeing that on video as I saw it back in the day. Nice. A Robocop. Um, I've just done a very brief synopsis of Robocop on the, on the Arrow release. So this is really nice to have on video. It's essential, isn't it? It's got the Virgin label there. That's a necessity. So thanks very much for that one, Scott. Perfect. Nice condition, these. Robocop 2. Um, it is inferior, but it's also, in some ways, more amusing and comic and preposterous and ridiculous. 1990, this one came out. I haven't seen it for a really long time, but I remember the brassy kid in there, the gangster child, <laughs> you know, getting up to no good. Uh, brilliant. Yeah, Robocop 2 and Virgin again. Looking forward to watching that, as it's supposed to be watched on VHS. One for the wrestling collection. Oh, look at that case, man. The old uh, pink clamshell. So, it, WrestleMania 6. And it's the Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan. We've also got Colossal Collection versus Demolition on a tag team match. Million Dollar Belt match. Jake Snake versus the Million uh, Dollar Man. Ted DiBiase. Mixed tag team match. And there's loads of matches on here, to be fair. Some of the ones that are interesting the Rockers versus the Orient Express. Uh, Bad News Brown, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Sounds interesting. Yeah. So three hours approximately this one. Definitely wanted that for the collection. You never know, we might do a wrestle talk round table and get round to that at some point. Um okay, so this one's called the Bay. When two researchers find a staggering level of toxicity in the water, so they attempt to alert the town before the situation gets out of control. Mm. From the producers of Insidious and Sinister by the award-winning director Barry Levinson. So that is supposed to be quite good. Well, I can't say I've ever seen it, so I'm looking forward to that one. The missus will like these. I mean, I selected these from what I can remember um, because they were horror themed and my missus particularly likes them so we'll be watching them together altered from the director of Blair Witch now this intrigued me the director of Blair Witch doing a well, from the looks of it a standard film so not a found footage type thing contains strong gory violence and language experience the evolution of terror from writer director of the Blair Witch comes a shocking story of four men determined to exact revenge against that savage alien life form that held them prisoner and killed their friend. Wow, that sounds out there. Altered. 2006. Yep. Interesting. Wow. Now this is this is some grindhouse vibes here. It's on the Dragon imprint. So I've got an amazing deal on this because I know for a fact that some of these are worth some big money. Um, Sam Remy. Uh, yes, so it's Night of the Intruder. I'm not sure if it's directed by Sam Remy. It's in German, all this. And I'm sure I have seen it, but I can't remember much about it. Except that I can't bloody wait to watch it again. Got an inlay there as well. So on the Dragon imprint, Night of the Intruder. Just seen it. What's it like? Yeah, I remember Scott showing it. It was like, yeah, I love that. Anything grind out. I mean, I'm at the grand old age of 14. I can't remember absolutely everything because I've filled my head with all sorts of different interests and things over the years. And um, sometimes it's hard when you put on the spot with a camera directed at you to think of things really quickly. But I do remember this one well. Scent of a Woman, Al Pacino, brilliant. About a blind guy who um, 
there's a lieutenant who hires a young guardian to assist him. So yeah, it's a romance tale from what I can remember. Very good. I've got a lot of good things to say about Pacino. He overacts at times, slightly hammy. If I was going to be hypercritical, but my God, he can act. And he's of that kind of Strasbourg method vibe as well, isn't he? Certainly up there. Um, he's a flamboyant type of guy. Uh, sometimes a little bit overkill. Oh, shoot me down. Uh, but I do love the guy still. So that is what we've got from Scott. Thank you so much, Scott. Excellent, wicked deal there. Lovely packaging. Really over the moon with that lot. I get a lot of pleasure in watching them. And one last thing I got today was um, I was discussing on the VHS Bootleggers channel about classic directors. Um, I am prepared to watch Hollywood films if they're any good. We're going to go to the cinema on Tuesday and watch the next Saw film. And actually that leads me on before I talk about this to discuss with you and let you know about a live stream that me and Gernal Dino plays are doing next Thursday all about the Saw film so Rob is a massive massive fan and has a sort of a real knowledge on these particular on that particular franchise and I'm going to be uh you know hosting that and discussing it with him but in preparation of course I've got to see the new Saw film and also actually on the back of the Poltergeist they've done a um review on the unholy we're going to go and see that where i can find the cinema that's playing it hopefully um at least early next week but until then i am looking at classic directors and i studied film studies at college and at university um and bizarrely enough i never ever got into fellini which is absolute madness isn't it how can you you know get into anything and films and not understand the impact of Fellini I guess I did understand it and I knew that Scorsese was a massive fan of his work but for whatever reason I've only ever seen a couple of his films so yes uh, essential this is and we have eight and a half here uh, La Dolce Vita I Vitaloni and Juliet of the Spirits all in um, Blu-ray format. So I picked this up on route home, jumped in the HMV, thought I've got to get some more Fellini. Been watching a couple of bits and bobs. To be honest with you, I can't remember all the titles of what I've watched now. But recently I had them on in the background just to see if I was I could get into it again. I'm more sort of appreciating it on, on an artistic level. Uh, and, I, and I did, so I'm going to pay more attention to these now. So yeah, it wasn't thirty nine ninety nine; it was nineteen pounds ninety nine. So when they scanned it in, it said, you know, I was prepared to pay that. There you go, and I got it for almost twenty pound cheaper. So I'm over the moon with all that, and we've got absolutely beautiful weather here. Next week, of course, we have the. Uh, Gernaldinho play stream and to my knowledge that is it for now but we will be back and something else might crop up in the meantime have a wonderful proper summer take it easy